Knowledge and Power Show, 
If it's Tuesday and it's 930, you have tuned in with Pastor Ange. I'm so excited, so excited that you have tuned in with me on tonight. It is truly a blessing to see another day because this is a day that was not promised to us, but because of God's grace and his mercy, he allowed us to see this day because if justice would have had its way, we wouldn't have never made it this far. So I'm excited today just for you to tune in with me. Listen, hang out with me for a little while. Um, Don't have much voice, but however, I'm going to give you what I have. So listen, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try my best to start act, answering questions. I had a couple of uh, people, you know, some people that inbox me some questions or some concerns, and I'm going to do my best to take, take a couple of shows and answer, and answer some questions. And um, and I I thought this one was really, really a good question because I talk about it uh, sometimes, but I'm going to kind of deal with it today because people um, uh, have a tendency of going back on what God promised them, or people have a tendency of getting thrown off track of what God promised them, or people have a tendency of not wanting to wait on the promise. People have a tendency of, uh, because they can't wait, then they jump into something else. And when they jump into something else because they can't wait, then what happens is um, it does not succeed. And when it does not succeed, majority of the time they like to blame God. However, it was not God. So the question was, you know, Pastor Ange, how do I know? What do I do? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm fearful of of what God has told me to do. I don't have it, you know. I don't. I don't really know what to do. But this is what God gave me, um, and they said that they have attempted some things, and every time they attempt some things, it seems like it falls through. So I want to kind of deal with that because the first thing I want to tell anybody is that never attempt anything great without God. Never attempt anything great without God. And whatever God tells you to do, it's going to be great. It's going to be super fantastic, wonderful, because he's not going to give you, tell you to do something and it does not turn out great because that is who he is. So never attempt anything great without God. Now, the thing about it is, if God has not led you concerning a new business, then don't start it. God has not led you. Are you listening to me? If God has not led you to start a new business, don't start it. I don't care how much people try to pressure you, don't do it. If God has not led you into a relationship that you're in, stay single. What's wrong with staying single? Don't be in a hurry to be in a relationship. Relationships need to be God-ordained. Don't be in a hurry. And I know it's, it's in this day and age when you talk about relationships, it's like you almost cursing. I mean, that, that it's, just, it's just the truth because, you know, people, oh, we don't do relationships anymore. We don't do this anymore. Well, the reason why a lot of relationships don't turn out like they should turn out is because this is not this is not the one, the man or the woman that God has led you to, and that's why you have a bad taste in your mouth. Now, trust me, we do have to go through the bad ones to get to the good ones, but what I'm saying today is if God has not led you into that relationship, stay single. It's all right to stay single. It'll save you a lot of heartache, and it'll save you a lot of pain. Because the approval of God is necessary for anything you want to work in your life. Anything that you want to do, you must have God's approval. It must, you must have God's approval. Do not force relationships. 
Let relationships grow. Don't force it. Do not force a new business. Do not force uh, um, anything new. It must be God ordained. And watch this. When is God ordained? Provision is only guaranteed for what God has commanded. Provision is only guaranteed for what God has commanded. So that kind of answers the question of, well, I don't have the money, but I know God said it. And then, you know, I tried something else, but that didn't work out. So what I'm telling you is God will make provision for what he has commanded you to do. We have a lot of churches out here right now. We have leaders um, and, and that, that, that were not called, they were sent. They just decided you you have some churches that were started out of anger. You have some churches that, you know, they just wanted to do it or, uh, but what again, wasn't called, was just sent. And Satan is choking the life out of those churches through debt. That's why a lot of churches close in the first year. A lot of churches close in the first month, in the first six months. But then I have to question you. And I question you, but whatever you're doing, if God has ordained it and if God has commanded it to be so, why are you closing it? Why are you shutting it down? Whatever vision that God has given you, it shall come to pass. And, yes, you have to tarry. Yes, you have to put some work in. But it's okay because once you have the approval from God, just like with the churches, okay? If God told you to start it, that will not choke you. You will have to go through um, some trials and tribulations of finances. And if you don't go through the trials and tribulations of finances, you'll have to go through the trials and tribulations of membership. you have to go through the trials and tribulations of trust, of growth, of swelling, uh, you have to go through the trials and tribulations of gossip. You have to go through the trials and tribulations of lying. You have to go through the trials and tribulations of any temptation. But, however, once again, if God has commanded it to be so, if God has ordained it, then God is obligated and commanded it to be so. He's obligated for it to turn out to be great. One of the saddest pictures emerging and the men and women of God is people that plunge uh, that plunge their churches into debt, spending money that has never yet arrived. You know, it seems a total contradiction to the instructions of God. Thou shalt not borrow. You know, a lot of people do that. You you don't have to do things like that when it comes down to God. Just do what God has called you to do. Whatever you are considering, if God is not in it, refuse to do it. And that sounds to me like, oh, Pastor Walk, I can do that. Pastor Angel, I can do that. That ain't no problem. God, God has not sanctioned it to be so. Oh, it's easy for me to refuse to do it. That's a lie. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Because I'm telling you right now. Each and every one of us have said it falls short of the glory of God. Each and every one of us has did something, attempted to do something that God did not call us to do. Satan has made it look so good that we did not refuse it. As a matter of fact, Satan has made it look so good that we thought it was God. Come on. We thought it was God, so we didn't refuse it. And a lot of you all that are sitting around saying, well, Pastor Inge, it's easy for me to refuse this, and it's easy for me to refuse that because I know God wasn't in it. So first of all, the devil will only tempt you in things that is hard for you to refuse. Oh, Pastor Inge. He will only tempt you in things that are hard for you to refuse. If money is not an issue for you, then he's not going to dangle money in your face because it will be easy for you to refuse it. If um, adultery is not uh, is something you can 
control or you don't have a problem is, don't worry. He's not going to uh, dangle adultery in your face because he knows you can refuse it. If procrastination, if uh, other things are uh, something that you can refuse, don't worry. Satan is not going to put that in your face. But he's only going to dangle in your face what he knows is hard for you to refuse. So if you have a problem staying faithful, then he's going to make sure that you are surrounded by good-looking men or good-looking women. And if if you can deal with good-looking men and good-looking women and and you can refuse it, but you have a problem, but but you can't, um, certain type of people, certain type of things that pique your interest, that gets you going, that gets you chasing, that's what he puts in your face because it's hard for you to refuse it. Satan is not dumb at all. He's very intelligent. So don't be too quick to say, I can refuse it if God didn't send it. What I'm telling you is, I, if I were you, if I knew that this was not of God, I would refuse it. And if by chance you got into something that was not of God, I would get out of it. And that's what I'm saying on tonight. Without the presence and the blessings of the Lord, it will not bring you joy, but it will only bring you heartache. Every command contains a plan. You have to find the plan. You have to find it. God will provide provision for what he has commanded you to do. God will not permit you to succeed without him. If God has commanded you to do something, if God has given it to you, you will not succeed without God. Are you listening to me? You will not succeed without God because God rewards faith, not brilliance. Oh, oh, if I felt like it, I would run across this room. God rewards faith, not brilliance. If you would remember, Moses wrote, When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. That's Deuteronomy 8 and 10. But then Moses went on to say, and thou say in thy heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to our father. That's Deuteronomy 8, 17 and 18. What are you saying, Pastor Ange? I'm saying our efforts often attempt to create a lifestyle that will make God necessary. He will not permit that. His only pleasure, God's only pleasure, is to be believed. But listen to this. God's only pain, pain, is to be doubted. Can I say that again? Only pleasure is to be believed. But God's only pain is to be doubted. So to answer that question again, if God has called you to do something, don't give up on it. Do what he's called you to do, but make sure it is what he has called you to do. You're going to go through trials and tribulations, but it's okay because God's pleasure is to be believed. His pain is to be doubted. Without faith, it is truly impossible to please the Lord. God understands, and I need you to understand, that whatever God told you to do, and I hope that this is answering your question, I want you to email me, inbox me, and say, Pastor Ange, I got it. You did it for me. You gave it to me. I got it. Watch this. God is not going to give you something for you to succeed alone. 
whatever he's given you, he's going to walk through it with you. Not that we are, um, what was the word I want to use? Not that we think ourselves to be more highly, but God's sufficiency. But it's about God's sufficiency, not of works. Second Second Corinthians three and five says, "Not of works, lest any man should boast." Ephesians two and nine. But watch this: God has tested. He has tested us on numerous occasions, but God wants us to pass the test. He wants to set us up to pass the test. He does not want to set us up to fail the test. So what are you willing to walk away from? What you're willing to walk away from will determine what God is willing to bring you. Watch this. So whatever you can walk away from is something you have already mastered. And why did you say that, Pastor Walker? I said that because people need to grasp that. That they need to get that because it is the radical that affects your life. It is good to provide for your household. It is a wise is wise to plan ahead for retirement. It's honorable to carefully manage your money so that God is pleased. But do not ever forget any attempt to isolate your life from acts of faith will turn out to be disastrous and will create um, nothing but trouble in your life. Or Robert said it well when he said, the most dangerous day in your life is the day you don't require a miracle. God is only impressed by our faith. So I'm trying to tell you now, have faith in whatever it is that God has told you to do. Don't get weary in well-doing because in due season you shall reap if you faint not. If God has called you to do something, if God has commanded you to do it, just make sure that it's hell that did it because God will not permit you to succeed without him. That's one of the greatest things that I can say. That's one of the greatest things that because God, and, and when you get in it and you go through some things, he's there. God will never leave you nor forsake you. And what he's given you to do, you you cannot you whatever God has given you to do, whether it's relationship, whether it's business, whether it's church, no matter what it is, whatever God has given you to do, commanded you to do, you cannot succeed without him. And he knows that. However, you and I both know that you're going to be tested. You and I both know that some of the prettiest things are found in the dirt. Roses are beautiful. But if you grab them the wrong way, you're going to get stuck by the thorns. Diamonds are precious, but you got to dig way down for the diamond, and you got to dig underneath the dirt. Gold is very expensive, but gold has got to be tried through the fire. Pearls are wonderful, but you got to go way down deep, deep into the sea. Deep into the sea, and you've got to find your pearls. So what are you saying? Everything that is great, you have to work for. Everything. So don't give up. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Understand that when you want God to give you a miracle, he's going to give you instruction. When you want God to do something for you, or when you want to answer He's going to give you instruction. You're not alone. But remember, 
It's not about brilliance. It's about faith. It's not about brilliance. It's about faith. I'm going to say that one more time. It's not about brilliance. It's about faith. Because I'm telling you right now, if it was about brilliance, I would not be talking to you today. But I do believe in my sanctified soul that nobody has greater faith than me when it comes down to God. You may be more qualified, but I got more God. I'm going to say that again. And that's that a bless your soul right there. You can live off of that for months. You got people that's more qualified. But when it comes down to it, you got more God. And that's why you get what they are qualified and they don't get it because they have the qualifications. They have more degrees than a thermometer, but they don't have more God than you. Who God calls, he qualifies. Who he qualifies, he justifies. So I'm telling you today, have faith, my brother. Have faith, my sister. Don't give up. Do what God has called you to do, even in such a time as this. I don't care what's going on in the world. We God is our Jehovah. God does not stop. He does not stop his plan because of what man is doing. So God is Jehovah. He's an unchangeable God. Once God has made up in his mind, years before you were born, that this was going to be what he had called you to do, and he knew that he was going to command you to do it, then God is obligated to give you the resources, to give you the provision, to give you the people to work with you and the people to work for you. If it's a a relationship, God has given you the love of your life. But first, I tell people all the time, fall in love with the man, then he will give you a man. Fall in love with the man, then he'll give you the woman. But put him first. This is Pastor Angela. Listen, email me at PastorAWalker205 at gmail.com. Facebook me at Angela Walker. You can uh, bring up my website, AngeWalkerMinistries.org. Listen, um, if you're in the Chicago area, come and hang out with me. I will be preaching a Women's Day um, on tomorrow, 75th and Luella. At 7.30 at the Free um, free Bible Church, I will be doing their Women's Day. God has got some great things in store for us. I'll tell you more about um, some other events that's coming up. Um, I look forward to seeing some of y'all soon. All the people that's in Arkansas, I'll be your way in September. I need you to meet me in Arkansas September I think it's September the 23rd or the 26th. I'll give you more information about that. Amen. And then for all of you that's in St. Louis, meet me. I'll be there in November. Amen. I took off my traveling shoes for a while, but amen. I'll also be in Detroit working on some things for Detroit, if not this year. I'll be there next year. So I've got to put my traveling shoes on again. Hallelujah. God will open up a door. But I love to say, you know, you can take God opening up a door, but I love God when he take the door off the hinges, and God will do that. So the person, and listen, when you ask me a question, if you want me to answer it, let me know if you want me to mention your name because I will, but I just don't like to mention people's name. They have not told me, um, and they have not given me their permission. So if you say, Pastor Angela, listen, you can ask the question and mention me. Then I'll get my team to make sure, put your email address on there or your telephone number, and we will give you a call. And let me tell you something. We'll even do so much as to uh, include you in. We'll include you in so that we can talk about it and maybe I can answer your questions even the more while you're on air with me because I want to make sure, you know, that we can, that you're satisfied that God will um, use you or use me to help you to where you need to be. But I will say this, Pastor Ange, don't do cook, cook crazy. I'm just going to say that. If you don't do crazy, you got to be real. 
because if you give me a question, we bring you on the line, and I feel like that you have another agenda, we will cut you off in the name of Jesus. We will definitely do that. So uh, this is Pastor Ann. Inbox me your question at Angela Walker on Facebook. Email me your question. Let's talk about it because I want to make sure I drop some knowledge and some power. All right? God love you, and I love you best. I'll see you next week, same time. Love you much. Bye-bye.